Internet. So, welcome. I'm Sandra Funk, CEO of my interior design firm, House of Funk, and my business program, The Interior Design Standard. And this, my friends, is Design Sips, where we raise a glass while discussing best practices for interior design entrepreneurs looking to build luxury design firms. Is that you? Awesome. Hi, everybody. It has been too long. All right. So now while we get settled in, I would love to know a little bit more about you. Tell me um, who you are, how long you've been in business, and where your business could use a little boost. All right. Hit me up in the comments. Welcome back, everybody. All right. So it's a day for rosé. Okay. So today I am drinking Studio by Miraval. Yummy rosé. Very, very good. Okay, so I will put that over there. You know, in case we need more. Because, uh, you know, we have to drink a little and talk a little and make our interior design firms better, right? Okay, so let's do it. Um, I would love to know, did you guys tell me where you're from, what you're doing? Tell me what's going on. Okay, if you don't want to answer all the big, tough questions, at least tell me what you're drinking. Is it time? Is it maybe too early? That's okay if you're still on the soft stuff. It's still fine time to hydrate. Okay, so... Not a problem at all. Um, let's dive in, shall we? Hi, everybody. What's up? Um, today, we are working on um, three tools to avoid overwhelm in your business and get joy back into your interior design business, right? We all started these businesses because we thought we could do better than the person we were working for or going into a firm straight out of school, whatever your story is, right? Lots and lots of career changes. Um, we, you know, followed the recommendations of our parents and went into something practical and then left that to go into our love interior design. Totally get it, been there, done that. Um, but the whole point of being an interior designer was to have creative integrity and joy and passion and make great money and make your own schedule. You remember all the dreams that you had when you started, right? Well, let's make sure that we don't get ourselves overwhelmed with being the entrepreneur. Lock that part down so that we can truly enjoy being an interior designer, right? Beautiful. Let's do it. Okay, so, duh, cheers. Is anyone else drinking with me today? Wow, yeah. It's been a minute, right? I took a little took a little design sips break and now we're back. I love it, love to see you all. All right, let's dive into questions, shall we? Suzanne asks, do you use a digital filing system? Oh yes, Suzanne, the number one tool to avoid overwhelm in your business is getting on a cloud-based filing system, okay? Something that is not just a place where you dump files, but crazy, crazy organized so that you can find exactly what you need with a few clicks from anywhere. All right, this is the key. Um, you want to be able to get to your things without having to go up into the attic archives, without having to dig through the filing cabinets. Like all of those things are wonderful, but they belong in the past right? Today, you should have all of your files organized by administrative business things, client files, inside of client files, you know, your design, CAD, whatever, however you do it, your drafting work inside of that pictures, right? Da -da 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 -da. Like a whole file system that is consistent across every single project so that you are 100% clear on where everything goes in your entire team and can find anything in a few quick clicks. It's really important. So um, I used to file a lot of documents in filing cabinets and um, now they work as a console. And we transitioned from a filing cabinet to a virtual, well, first we transitioned to like an online office that was all flexible and, you know, a lot less paper. We were being eco-friendly and also efficient. We scanned in anything that was truly too important to miss and file that away in our digital systems. Now, we don't print it if we don't need to. Anything that comes in the mail that needs to be saved gets scanned in. Anything that gets marked up gets scanned in if it's a hand draw, redo kind of markup. Um, there just isn't a physical filing system in the House of Funk world. We scan in and save everything, okay? So 
Almost nothing needs to be on physical paper. Screenshot it, scan it, email it, all of that. Save it in your uh, related Asana. Save it in the Google Drive in the right place, whichever floats your boat. And if you do have something that needs to be saved, it's probably so important, an original document, you know, something very important signed, the original contracts. Those should be tucked away neatly and organized in a fireproof safe, okay? If it's that important that it can't be scanned and saved that way. And then, um, so my favorite way to do this, just as we always talk about, there's lots of ways to do this. I'm just gonna tell you how I do it. You take what works for you and leave the rest. I use the Google Drive. It's cloud-based. It makes me happy. Um, it's so good. I, I was about to show you my phone, but I'm, we're, yeah, it's okay. Um, I was at a stone yard with a client and we needed some existing finishes from the room that we didn't have samples of to like really make sure that this stone that was pushing some limits was going to work. And the client was like, can we get a sample of the stone to take back to the house? The answer from the stone yard was no, super premium. They're not like knocking off a corner. Okay, no problem. Boop, 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 boop. Pictures of your existing room, right? It's all on my phone. It's in my Google Drive. It's uh, it's filed under as is client photos of the room that we're talking about. And the client was like, whoa, how did you just do that? And I was like, well, like, because I'm organized. Ding. See? It's really worth it. All right. Let's drink a little wine and, you know, say yay to getting organized. It feels so good. My daughter was... Um, drowning in stuff in her bedroom and over break kind of got like motivated to clean everything out. And she's literally sleeping better because her room is clean. Like when we think about how good it feels to have things just streamlined and organized, it's like life changing. Like our subconscious calms down and we sleep better at night. It's that important. All right. So drinking. Okay. So Teresa asks, our next question is up. I feel like I have paper clutter everywhere. I'm in the business of making spaces beautiful, yet my own spaces are buried under lists. Help. Well, like I just said, you know, that clutter and that feeling of being like closed in by the stuff is really, really troublesome to the subconscious mind and just getting through the day and getting your work done. So the more that you can clear the clutter, get rid of the sticky notes, it's incredibly, incredibly important. For instance, before I started this episode of Design Sips, I ran around my office and got where I can see clean and cleared, cleaned up my beautiful backdrop, and prepared myself to spend my time totally focused on you. It would be really hard to sit here and stay focused if there was a lot going on in my environment. And it's the same way with all of our spaces, right? Not just work. Are we really fully focusing on our family if our dining room has turned into a storage facility? Okay, so. The second big tool to avoid overwhelm in your business is to go digital with your tasks and your to-do lists. Instead of having list after list, you know, little things jotted down, thoughts in one journal, a scrap of paper over here, sticky notes everywhere, get everything organized and everything into a digital task management system that will literally change your life. So I don't care which one you use, there's a whole bunch of ones out on the market, again, I use Asana. I love it, love it, love it. Maybe obsessed. Gonna admit that here. So Asana is amazing for me because A, we use the free version, which is nuts that this we get so much value out of this thing and we don't even pay for it. There is an upgraded premium version that gives you, you know, extra great things like start and end dates on tasks, but we typically put today's date, the day that it gets assigned in, and then we just note a due date if it's due further out. Um, you can delegate tasks, and like I said, there's room to write out descriptions. There's room to make additional followers. Um, we can ping tasks back and forth from one another. We can set priorities for tasks. We can set due dates for tasks. Everything can be categorized by projects or by, by client or however you want to think about it. You have to get in there. All of these systems, right? are empty when you first start them. The Google Drive doesn't show up with structure that helps you figure it out. Asana doesn't come with structure. When you first open it, it's like a barren desert of nothingness, right? 
you have to put that structure in. So you have to start to think, what are the tasks that I need to do related to marketing? And you create a marketing project. And you just start with putting all the marketing tasks in there. And then over time, you start to develop the marketing team is all followers on all of those tasks, right? There are repeatable tasks that develop over time, like, oh, every month we do this marketing thing. Or every quarter we reach out to this specific, you know, person, press, publication, etc. So repeatable tasks are everything. Once you have a task repeatable and you set the timer repeat in your digital software, now you can refine it and clarify it and you can actually stop doing that task. You can make that task someone else's responsibility because you created it, you thought it through, you tried it a few times, you refined it, it's exactly how you want it, it's no longer your task. Now someone else can do that as well or better as you can. And this, my friends, is the creme de la creme of all business delegating, right? Getting it off of your plate for someone else to do that can do it as well or better than you can do it. So that only works if you spend a little time getting it all set up in the beginning. Okay, or hiring amazing rock stars who can set it up on their own and develop things. Of course, I'm not saying you have to personally develop everything. All right, what else am I missing from Asana? Did you guys get the idea behind it that it's a framework that has like incredible capacity, but you do have to start with something? Um, yeah, so I even use Asana in my home like a lot a lot, a lot. We have a lot of house guests. And so we get guest rooms ready on a regular basis. And so that's a, that's a repeatable group of tasks. If I'm going to have house guests, I repeat that whole group of tasks, right? Get the guest rooms ready, put waters on the bedside table, make sure there's soap and shampoo and conditioner in the showers, like, right? All of those things. But that I'm just saying Asana can go from business with like your marketing objections and your, you know, monthly newsletter and everything else all the way through your life. And it certainly has come all the way through mine. I love it, love it, love it. Okay, cheers to that. Seriously, check out Asana. It's one of my favorite things. Mm -mm -mm. Can you guys give me a little love if you use a manage a task management system? I don't care which one, just something that helps you stay organized. It's good to know. All right, we have our another question. Jill asks, what kind of tasks do you put into your task management system? Literally everything. Like if I am like wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like, you know what I should do or I need to go do or I oh, keep forgetting, everything goes in there. So I have a personal section. I even keep my, you know, I'm a big meditate mantra person. I have a reminder to do my mantras and meditation every day. I have my mantras saved in there for different, different days, get different mantras. I'm not kidding. Everything is in Asana. Um, if you wanted to really see what's inside of my head, you just log into my Asana account, but you can't because it's password protected. All right. So um, lit and from a design perspective, our entire design project, our entire potential client process, anything that's repeatable and anything that's one-off, but any repeatable tasks really benefit from being clarified into Asana and then set to repeat. It's a beautiful thing. But anything that you're going to do, it's a wonderful thing to be able to track it there as well. Assign it to someone else, get feedback. It's just fantastic. So in fact, um, I'm so excited to share. We've got a, an Asana template, like a repeatable template for you. It's the exact script that I use for potential clients. Um, and the script lives in my Asana template. So again, that's like if I have a potential client call, I'm not looking around for the script. It's right there. I open Asana. It's right inside of my Asana tasks, the potential client pro, you know, script, that initial call. Um, it's how I vet every single potential client. We call them PCs. And that, um, oh, Sarah, can you share the link with them? It's the... Um, interiordesignstandard.com forward slash dream. And this for me, that initial client call is so, so crazy important because it's how we go from taking whatever project shows up on our doorstep to really carefully vetting our potential clients to make sure that we are only working with clients that are a wonderful, amazing fit for us. And so this template, the 
call template will really help you understand what one design firm does to vet each and every potential client. And you can take it and you can, of course, make it your own and use it in your own design firm to only work with clients that really, truly align with your ideal client avatar, with what kind of design you want and dream about doing. Awesome. It is literally the first step to building an incredible design firm is taking the right projects. Cheers to that. All right, everybody. We have more questions. Are you ready? Who's with me? Um, Mara asks, how do you organize sourcing online? This is a huge one. I, back in the day, would have, well, way back in the day, I would have things torn out of magazines. I would be printing images offline. I would have a million binders with sticky notes everywhere, right? Laying open and stacked with the fabric books. Like, do you remember what your design firm looked like in like 2002? Because I do. And it was probably a hot mess of just stuff everywhere, right? This pile over here is the living room. This section over here is the bedroom. It was just mayhem, crazy making mayhem. And every design firm that I worked in, because we weren't super digital yet, was like that. It was just crazy. And the library was always a hot mess because nobody put anything back where it was supposed to. Tell me you remember. Okay. So back in the day, we didn't have all the tools we do now. But now, if you're not using the tools, you're crazy. You have to get on board. There are so many ways to make sourcing so completely organized and enjoyable and just freeing because you can kind of pin everything together, see everything together, move it around. You can delete, you can get rid of a bunch of stuff. And if you change your mind, it's right there. My favorite tool for online sourcing is called Wakora. All right. It is a game changer for refining this process. What it is a clipper, right? And a lot of programs have clippers. You can do this with a lot of different programs. The one that I am personally in love with is Wakora, but a lot of the different design softwares have this built in and a lot of different, um, a lot of different, you can do this in a lot of different ways. So definitely if you have access to a clipper that allows you to organize and systematize your sourcing, do it. It is so, so, so amazing. So the beautiful thing too, you can take a picture of something like an antique, right? That you're not sourcing online and add it right into the mix. You can go and you can Google any fabric these, day and these days and grab a, a snip of it while you also have the physical fabrics in your office. Um, the online shopping is incredible. Every single thing has a photo of it, or you can take a photo if you're physically in a store. All of those images then can be moved around and organized and looked at together. So one of my favorite things is that I can sit... I can drag and drop the images around in Wakora, but also super duper organize them. So I can put the bed and the nightstand and the lamp and the rug all together and see if I'm liking how they're all looking. And then at the same time, I can move all the lighting next to each other and I can make sure that that's all looking good before I go so far as to ask someone to make a board and spend time putting all of this onto a board, right? Instead, I'm pre-checking that everything works together. I also drop high level dimensions of all the pieces in there so that I'm looking at chair heights next to end tables right from the get go, right? I'm looking at the bed size next to the nightstand from the beginning. One of my favorite things about Wakora, I make a board for every room and then I make a section within Wakora for every item I need with the ideal dimensions that I've outlined in my floor plan from that. Then I'm often sourcing. I know I need a king size bed. I know I need 32 inch wide nightstands. I know I need lamps for those nightstands. But, 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 right? I know I need a 32 diameter light fixture in the middle of the room. It makes sourcing truly a joy. Like, crazy fun. I hang out on my laptop. I've got Wakora open. I'm going to all my favorite sites. Oh, and by the way, total amazing Wakora hack. Save one Wakora board that includes all of your favorite interior design sources and then open that board. You can have multiple boards open while you're sourcing. So if you're sourcing lighting, you go to your Wakora board for sourcing. You go to the lighting section and you just click off on all of those tabs to go and source your favorite lighting vendors. So you don't have to sit there and rack your brain. Wait, who else does the lighting that I like? It's all, like again, I'm a person like 
save it. You know you're going to come back to that website of this amazing lighting that you found. Save it in your Recora board. Simple pin, right? Pin the logo to a Recora board about sourcing in the lighting section. And you will never wonder who you should, where you should look for lighting again. Every single section is got has a plan, right? Um, okay, have I spazzed out on a photo Cora? It's amazing. Um, so we we share exactly how I use Vacora inside the standard, and our designers love it, like love, love, love it. In fact, one of our designers shared in our group, loving using Vacora and can already see how it will help with quoting and keeping everything together, editing out the weeds, etc. It really is. So the most beautiful thing about Vacora, right? I can have one of my team members set up the board, set up the ideal dimensions for each item needed, set up those all of those parameters. I can have them take a whack at sourcing or I can take the first crack at it. I usually at least go through and put in some of my ideas that I've already had while looking in the space that I just don't want to have them waste time on. So if I'm like, I know this is the right chandelier for that, I'm going to pop that in and put in some of my ideas. And then I give it to a team member to go ahead and give me three options for the nightstands, give me two or three options for the lamps. Do you see what I'm saying? And then I get it pinged back to me in Asana as a task, I open Wakora up and I go through an edit, right? So I say, okay, that's the chandelier that I said I wanted. And now I'm like going through and seeing, okay, that bed, you know, of the three bed options, this is the one I like. Now that's the nightstand. I can compare the sizing. Do you see? It's all digital. It's all happening like boom, 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 boom. Once I pick everything, I ping it right back over to my team member and I tell them to start creating boards. They pull, they can pin those images right off of Wakora into the board maker and start making boards. Similarly, I can hand them that Wakora, all of it links back to the vendor, and I can have them start doing proposals right out of Wakora because each and every product that's going to make up that room is sitting there in that same spot together with links out to the websites where they can log in and get pricing or obviously email for pricing, whatever, whatever's happening with that vendor. Um, but having a system like this where you have it all locked down and figured out and have a real clear understanding of who's going to do what and how it's going to bounce back and forth makes us crazy efficient. And by the way, so much fun. Like there is nothing more fun than sourcing for a job. I know you know that, but still. Sometimes it can get a little hairy. And for me, when there's stacks of things everywhere and things are getting messy and I can't remember where this was going to go and what are the dimensions on that, it's not fun. This keeps it just so, so good. Love it. All right, people, what do you think? I think we need a cheers. Let's, all right, I think it's time to wrap this baby up. Those were our three tools to avoid overwhelm. Really important to go digital, systematize, and of course, keep it fun. The whole point of going into business for yourself was because of your passion because it's your art, because you are excited about it. So get the business stuff locked down, get the systems locked down, get yourself efficient and profitable so you can really enjoy all of the design all the time. So um, do not forget about to grab my potential client call script. We talked about it earlier. It is the way that we make sure that we are only working with dream clients and that is very carefully vetting who we let into our world and who we take on as clients. So um, you have to check out interiordesignstandard.com forward slash dream. All right. And remember, everyone, we are stronger together. If this episode helped you in any way, shape, or form or gave you any value whatsoever, please do me a favor and share it with some of your design friends so we can all rise together. Cheers. <laughs>